The Ten Rings organization has played a major role throughout the history of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and while that role was not always apparent and obvious, they were working behind the scenes and their machinations shaped the very world that the Marvel Cinematic Universe takes place in. In today's video, I will be covering the organization's entire history within the MCU as we know it. That means that I will not be discussing the Ten Rings from the comic book universe or any other version that is not canon to the MCU, although I will use comics that are canon to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So with that being said, let's get into it. Roughly 1,000 years ago, Zhu Wenwu discovered mystical artifacts of unknown origin which would eventually be known simply as the Ten Rings. Wenwu was granted the powers of a god by these rings, giving him superhuman power, speed, and immortality. Wielding the Ten Rings, Wenwu was unmatched in battle and quickly amassed his own army, which he dubbed the Ten Rings. Wielding this mighty power came with infamy known across the globe, and Wenwu garnered many monikers, including the Warrior King, the most dangerous man on Earth, and even Master Khan, implying that he may have actually been the real-world Genghis Khan, which seems pretty likely as no other army could stand against the Ten Rings, and Wenwu was active during the time that Genghis Khan was also active. Throughout the years, the Ten Rings would have to alter their tactics somewhat and began shaping the world around them to fit Wen Wu's vision. He ensured that the Ten Rings would be able to operate covertly in the modern world by having each region of the globe overlooked by an autonomous individual cell where the highest ranking member of each cell had one contact in another cell. This secrecy was paramount as it allowed the group to evade detection by the likes of S.H.I.E.L.D. for years. During the time before Heroes, they toppled governments, overthrew kings, and once Wen Wu had run out of places and people to conquer in our world, he began looking elsewhere. He came across information pertaining to the ancient city of Ta Lo, where they practiced a secret and sacred form of martial arts not known to the rest of the world. So in 1996, Wen Wu traveled to the forest where Ta Lo was said to be located and began his search. Although unaware that the forest would consume any intruder who did not know the path, his small group was killed while he saved himself and ventured deeper into the forest where he met a woman, Ying Li, who guarded the gate. Wen Wu, being the arrogant warlord he was, attacked Ying Li, who defeated him in battle. The first time this had ever happened since he acquired the Ten Rings. After his defeat, Wen Wu continued to visit Ying Li, and the two eventually fell in love and started a family. After doing so, Wen Wu abandoned the Ten Rings, which gave him his power as well as the organization that he built over the past 1,000 years, and the Ten Rings lost the influence and sway that they had held for a millennium. However, his past eventually caught up to him, and seven years after stepping down as the leader of the Ten Rings, the Iron Gang, who had been wronged by Wen Wu in the past, came to his home while he was away and assassinated his wife, Ying Li. After finding the body of his dear departed wife, Wen Wu swore revenge and located some of the men who had attacked his family. After his son, Shang-Chi, identified the assailants, Wen Wu murdered them, reassumed his role as the leader of the Ten Rings, and began rebuilding the group. So as the sole leader of the Ten Rings, Wen Wu, who had been hiding in the shadows, silently rebuilding his organization, became folklore to his followers, and only those within his inner circle were even aware of his existence. In the year 2009, the Ten Rings began illegally purchasing Stark Industries weapons from Obadiah Stane, who had secretly made a deal with the organization to ambush Tony Stark's military convoy in order to murder the young billionaire. However, the Ten Rings decided to kidnap Stark instead, whom they imprisoned and forced to create Jericho missiles. But Stark deceived the Ten Ring cell who was holding him captive, created a suit of armor, and escaped capture. However, this cell of the Ten Rings, led by a man known as Raza, assembled the broken pieces of Iron Man's armor and began piecing it back together with the intention of selling the design to Obadiah Stane, who would make them an army of Iron Men. However, they were betrayed by Stane, who murdered Raza and the remaining members of his Ten Rings cell. 
After Tony Stark was able to defeat Obadiah Stane, he and S.H.I.E.L.D. began working to topple the Ten Rings, with Iron Man working alongside Nick Fury to take down a cell in Yemen, while Black Widow was busy sabotaging Ten Rings operations elsewhere. Being attacked from all sides by Iron Man as well as S.H.I.E.L.D., Wenwu attempted to have Tony Stark murdered yet again by assisting Ivan Vanko, who had his own personal vendetta against Iron Man. So Wenwu sent one of his Ten Rings agents to get Ivan Vanko the proper paperwork to get to Monaco for the attempted assassination. But this also failed. Not long after this, the Ten Rings began buying pieces of the Jericho missile from a man named Mikhail Fyodorov, and the organization intended to detonate the Jericho missile near the border between Russia and North Korea, which would greatly destabilize world peace. However, Mikhail soon stopped following up on his end of the bargain, and an assassin was sent to deal with him. This assassin was tailed by Black Widow, who eventually infiltrated the launch area and destroyed the missile, while the Ten Rings operatives were arrested by S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Phil Coulson. Following his attempted assassination by Ivan Vanko, Tony Stark was rejected as a potential member of the Avengers, but became a consultant to S.H.I.E.L.D. During this time, the Ten Rings set a trap for James Rhodes, also known as War Machine, in order to seize the War Machine armor for themselves. Unfortunately for War Machine, this trap happened to coincide with Loki's invasion of New York City, so there was nobody there to back him up. However, James was able to defeat the Ten Ring soldiers and made it to New York just in time to eat some shawarma with the rest of the Avengers. Following their failure, Wen Wu called in the soldiers who failed to obtain the War Machine armor with the intention of killing them. However, they informed him that they did manage to scan the suit that War Machine was wearing during their battle, which would give them an advantage against Iron Man later on. Around this time, Wen Wu's son, Shang-Chi, had completed his training, and seven years after the murder of Wen Wu's wife, he finally located the leader of the Iron Gang who had her killed. So he sent his son on an assassination mission to kill this man, and promised his son that after he returned, they would build the Ten Rings back up to its former glory and rule as father and son. However, his son never came home despite the success of his assassination mission. Following these events, Aldridge Killian began conducting various dangerous and illegal experiments of genetic code as a part of his extremist project. These experiments led to many of the test subjects to explode, causing severe collateral damage. Killian decided to disguise his failed experiments as terrorist attacks, but to do so, he required someone to fill the role of the supposed terrorist leader who could take credit for the attacks. So Killian began researching the history of the Ten Rings, who at this point were known as one of the most feared terrorist groups in the world and in all of history. Because he did not know Wen Wu's true name, he came up with the Mandarin moniker, which would be the name and face of the Ten Rings. To really sell this fantasy, he also hired failed actor Trevor Slattery to fulfill this role publicly. Eventually, Iron Man exposed Trevor Slattery as a fraud and took down Aldridge Killian. Enraged over having his identity stolen and his name dragged through the mud, Wen Wu sent one of his agents, Jackson Norris, who disguised himself as a documentarian to get close to Slattery so that he could kidnap the actor and bring him to the true leader of the Ten Rings, Wen Wu. Norris was successful and brought Slattery to Wen Wu's base of operations, where he was to be executed. However, Trevor saved himself by reciting some Shakespeare, which amused Wen Wu and his men. So they decided to keep Slattery alive as a sort of court jester who would perform for the terrorist organization on a semi-regular basis. Following his imprisonment of Trevor Slattery, Wen Wu continued his pursuit of cutting-edge technology to arm his soldiers. To this end, he set a representative into PIM Technologies, where Darren Cross would be presenting his latest work with their PIM particles. Wen Wu's buyer was present as Cross showed off the latest uses for PIM particles, as well as the Yellow Jacket suit, which the Ten Rings were very interested in. Eventually, the Ten Rings made a deal with Hydra to purchase the new PIM tech together, however, their plans were foiled by Ant-Man, and Wen Wu's agent was eventually killed during the altercation. 
Not much is known of the activities of the Ten Rings after 2015, but we do know that after the blip, Wenwu began hearing the voice of his late wife, Ying Li, who was apparently not dead, but being held prisoner in Ta Lo by her family. Obsessed with returning his wife to his side, he sent his assassins Razor Fist and Death Dealer to obtain the pendants that his wife had bestowed on their children, Shang-Chi and Xia Ling, when they were children. Wenwu believed that these pendants would reveal the path into Ta Lo, where he would be able to save his wife from her prison, and while he was able to find the path using the pendants, he planned to burn down Ta Lo if they would not free Ying Li, which his children could not go along with, so they were imprisoned alongside Trevor Slattery. Eventually, his children escaped to Ta Lo with Trevor, and Wenwu followed with his forces to save his wife. Upon arriving, he defeated his son in battle and went to the gate, where his wife was being held, to break it down. However, in actuality, she was not being held behind the gate, and the voice that he was hearing was a trick being played by the Dweller in Darkness, who planned to use the Ten Rings to escape and consume the souls of our universe. Despite Shang-Chi's interference, the Dweller in Darkness was able to escape and killed Wen Wu by absorbing his soul, but was ultimately defeated by Shang-Chi, Jia Ling, Katie, the citizens of Ta Lo, and the Great Protector. After Wen Wu's death, Jia Ling was entrusted with shutting down all of the operations and cells of the Ten Rings, but instead decided to become the new leader of the Ten Rings and open up their ranks to both men and women for the first time in their thousand year history. And that is the complete history of the Ten Rings as we know it thus far in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I hope you all learned something interesting today, and if you did, be sure to let me know down in the comments. Also, be sure to like and subscribe, it does really, really help us out. And remember the motto, it's the Ten Rings over everything, and I'll see you guys next time.